we go. All right. Uh, so at this point, we can see that I've got a lot of the ship built, right? Uh, and it's been through a lot of bridging and extruding border edges, the occasional inset to create these. Um, you know, we've been working a lot in two for edge mode, right? A lot in two for edge mode. Uh, remember, today's quiz is three for select, right? Three for face select. Uh, so one of the things we, of course, can do is we can still keep bridging some stuff together back here, right? We can easily start to uh, do some more extruding if we want to. We've got some interesting edge loop forms going through here, which is kind of neat. Um, in this case, I feel like one of the things I want to do is I'm not even going to fill this in. Sometimes you can actually use kind of a hole you already have as a cool way to kind of do a bit of like an engine thruster area, right? Because we kind of have the hover engines that'll kind of keep it the, the craft aloft, right? These will keep it aloft uh, and allow it to kind of maneuver. But you, you still need some kind of like, say, forward thrust oftentimes, right? So we could easily build some kind of jet engine exhaust kind of back here. Now that's actually easy. It's extrude and a bit of moving and scaling. Remember, if I go to two for edge mode, I could double left click to select an edge loop, right? Remember, double left click selects an edge loop. So if I double click with the left mouse button on an edge, it selects that edge loop. Now, of course, I can extrude. Remember, the click key for extrude, if you're using industry compatible, is control E. But it is your tool right there, right? Extrude region. Now, in this case, remember, you can always grab any one of these handles to do it. You can grab the yellow plus to kind of bring it in a little bit. You grab the view extrude. In this case, that extrusion that I did created a little bit of a row of polygons here. I can then switch to R for scale, right? Our scale tool, because I want to make this kind of little area here smaller. I want to do geometry. That's why I extruded this, right? I extruded, and it creates this new row of geometry here. But I want it to come in to be smaller in shape. So I turn my scale tool on. Now remember, you have all your handles, right? Red, green, blue, X, Y, Z, right? X, Y, Z. Remember, you have the squares, which will scale two axes at one time. And you even have the white circles, which will scale all three axes at the same time. And remember, middle mouse button will also do that. So if I hold down middle mouse button, you see how it kind of does a uniform scale? And you see how I can start to bring this shape in more, right? Now in this case, that's a little bit weird. So I can go to W for move left click to select a single edge, middle mouse button to view, move that up. And you see how I could actually go back in here and adjust some of these shapes a little bit, right? So if I don't want this to kind of be quite so pushed back in, I can still come back in here and adjust some of these shapes, right? Just by grabbing these edges. That one I'm probably okay with. But there we go. And you see how I've kind of created a bit of kind of like a, an, a jet exhaust here. Did a little bit of shaping with edges. Now, of course, I could double left click on that border edge loop again, right? Because remember, this is a border edge loop. Remember, border edges are edges that are only connected to one face. Those kinds of edges are absolutely okay to extrude and bridge from to build with this method. So I'm going to do another extrusion, actually. Control E. I'm going to use the, the view extrude, right, which is that white circle or middle mouse button. Both do it. The middle mouse button does it without you having to click on it. You just hold down middle mouse button drag. And maybe I could scale that in a little bit. R for scale to bring it in a little bit there. And you see I can kind of start to make a bit of an exhaust in here. You know, maybe in one more extrusion I could bring back a little bit. Maybe one more scale, right? R for scale. And you see how now I've created kind of a jet engine exhaust? Now, if you've already filled in all those areas, this can always be done to polygons. Right? Remember, you can grab a polygon, extrude it, scale in, extrude. So this can be done with polygons also. It doesn't have to be border edges, right? You could actually absolutely do that with extruding uh, faces, right? But if you already kind of have a, a, an area that would work well for that, you don't have to fill it in, right? You can just extrude it back. But remember, extrude faces can also let you make exactly this kind of shape. But you notice how that wasn't anything new. That was just the extrude on border edges tool. That was selecting edge loops, things we've done several times, not only in this project. We used many of those tools on our last project, right? 
and I just made sure to use some move and scale to kind of push those shapes in. Moved a couple of edges around my hand. Now I kind of have like a little jet engine in the back to kind of give some uh, forward thrust to our little hovercraft. So once again, nothing really new there, not a new tool. Just showing you how versatile this technique is. Now in this case, we could always rebuild this section a little bit differently as well. Uh, maybe I want a little bit of vertical thrust here also. So this might actually be an instance where I just go to two for edge mode and I could select, say, these three edges, right? Maybe even that fourth one. And remember, we could extrude these. Actually, I think I'm going to uh, deselect that one. Remember, shift adds and subtracts, right? So if I left click, it selects it. Shift left click, shift left click. Now remember, this is going to be different on, can be different on your ships in different parts. That's where it always gets a little tricky, uh, right? You, you guys might have some design elements that are a little bit different than mine on your ship, right? They should have the cylinders, the four cylinders, and kind of the subdivision modifier on and the extrusions to kind of create the, the spine here. But after that, you can kind of build it kind of to a certain extent in your own way. But in this case, remember, left click, shift left click, shift left click. The shift adds to selections. It actually usually subtracts selections in Blender also. Not always, though. Uh, particularly uh, circle select, control uh, deselects. So it's always going to be shift and or control for deselecting, right? Shift is always add selection. Shift is often deselect also, but sometimes control will be. So just kind of just keep shift and control in mind for your add and subtract selections. And as you get used to your tools more and more, you'll kind of figure, figure out, you'll, you'll get used to which ones do which. So I'm just going to extrude these in, right? Control E. Remember your extrude tools right here, though. But Control E is the extrude quick key, right? E for extrude, E for elevator, E for elephant. Control E. But it's a tool right there. And of course, I could use that middle mouse button one, right? Remember, that's the middle mouse button is just doing the white circle, though, which is your view extrude. And that means you just hold down your middle mouse button drag, and it extrudes right in the view. Then I could let go, and I could do another middle mouse drag to create another extrude. And see how, when it gets to the center, it merges. Remember, that's what your clipping does. We've seen and talked about this a bunch on this project already. And then I can maybe just hit W for move, bring this up a little bit. Maybe double left clicks with that is bring it down a little bit, right? See, we can adjust the shapes a little bit there. Maybe bring that edge out a little bit. And then, of course, I could select two to two, right? Because remember, your bridge tool needs same number to same number. In this case, with the mirror on, it it's kind of already works. And then I can right click. And remember, when you right click, it brings up your context menu. In this case, it's in edge mode. But if you go to edge menu, right, there is an actual menu in Blender, edge menu. And you'll see there's actually bridge edge loops right there. So most of these tools are actually going to be in your vertex space and edge menus up here. It's just that when you right click, it brings that menu up here basically anyways. So it's quicker and easier to get to than to go up to the menu. So bridge those. And then, of course, I've got this little triangle hole here, so I could double left click on one of those edges to select the border edge loop, right? Remember, border edge loops can be selected just like regular edge loops. Double left click, right click to bring up that edge context menu, and right below bridge edge loops is new face from edges. You have seen we occasionally are using triangles on this model. But you notice how where we're using them, they're not really creating any shape issues, and we don't have a lot. We're eventually going to subdivide this, and it's going to have all quads anyways. We like doing quads for most of our stuff, but the occasional triangle, if it's not creating bad shape, it's really not an issue. Uh, some of these instances, though, I will fix these later on. So I'll show you some tricks for kind of adjusting those. But for now, it's really about getting kind of the primary shape taken care of. And so I can just kind of come in here and maybe adjust this a little bit. And we can easily make this into another kind of engine opening. Double left click to select that border edge loop. Control E for extrusion. Middle mouse click will do that extrude automatically for you. R for scale. 
Remember, middle mouse button will do that uniform scale also. And maybe W and a little bit of middle mouse button for view move. And you see how we've kind of created a little bit of a thrust engine down here also. And I can rotate my camera, right? Alt, left mouse button, rotate your camera to get, get more of a side view. This is creating a big star right here. Uh, I will show you how to fix that later on, right? Right now, we're not going to worry about it. It's not fatal to us at this moment. Uh, usually, the bigger the star, the more of a problem it can cause. I'm going to show you guys how to use your uh, rotate tools, rotate uh, clockwise edge loops soon. But for right now, no, right? So I'm going to control E to extrude, bring this in. Maybe a little bit of R for scale so I can kind of get a little thinner. We just kind of created a, a new jet intake right there. There we go. But I will show you guys how to optimize, maybe get rid of a few of these triangles, kind of maybe readjust this a little bit so this big star is not there. Remember, a star is a vertex with a certain amount of edges coming out of it, right? This, this vertex has one, two, three, four, five, six edges coming out. It's not the end of the world, but it's not really ideal either. Uh, so we're going to optimize it later on. Remember, it's okay to sometimes have a couple of triangles, maybe a big star that you don't want in your final model, but aren't causing huge problems yet. But we do want to be aware of those and be careful with them. Uh, but like I said, we'll do a little bit more of that optimization later on. The last thing I want to show you today was how to start to build the cockpit. Now in this case, I think I'm going to take this vertex and move it up a little bit more. Maybe two for edge mode to kind of grab this edge, move it down a little more, just to kind of get that area there a little bit better the way I want it to be. And now I'm going to go to three for face select, right? That's today's mini quiz. Three for face select. And that's going to allow me to left click on a face, shift left click, shift left click. Now, if you really want to, right, like I said, I'm trying to keep it simple for you, but it's always good to have some, at least this information in videos. This is optional. But remember, we have selection options in the select box, right? Q is the quick key for your select tool up here. If you hit Q again, it toggles to circle, right? It looks like the original one where it's, it's kind of like an orange shape, an orange dashed shape, but instead of being a box, it's a circle. Circle select has a radius size for the brush. That's why a circle comes up. Remember, circle select is basically drag select from other packages. If you hold down your left mouse button and move your cursor, you see how you can just kind of paint select these? That's actually a really cool selection tool. That is an option, though. Do you have to use that? No. Just shift click, shift click, shift click will get you there. You can also do something like this where I select a face here and then shift left click a face on a different part, but kind of on the same path. And remember, in the Select Menu tool, Select Link, there is a feature on Select Link called Shortest Path. And that will select in between those. These are great selection features if you want to take advantage of them. You even have the Select Next and Previous. Blender's got great selection tools. I love them. I use all of them in different ways. I do try to keep it a little simpler for you guys, right? It's your first spaceship ever. You're still learning Blender. You know, <laughs> it's a high school class. <laughs> so I do try to kind of keep it a little simpler for you. None of what I showed you you have to use there. They're options. You can always still select what you want just by shift, left, click, shift, left, click, shift, left, click. It just takes a little bit longer, right? It just takes a little bit longer. Now, the way I want to kind of create like a viewport or like a view window screen it's actually the inset tool, right? We've seen this a little bit. We use it to kind of do our engine stuff, right? So right here is the inset faces tool. It's right below extrude. There is a default quickie for it, I for inset. And if I click on it, I can left click drag on that yellow circle, although middle mouse button does it as well, right? Middle mouse button usually is an alternate kind of for those things. And remember, inset you'll notice creates geometry like an extrusion, but instead of moving it out, it scales it. Now you'll notice that this is still active. I haven't done another inset. I haven't switched to another tool. Inset's still on. That means the options for this specific inset are still available down here. Right? Remember that bottom left corner, there's always that little kind of small menu bar. 
it'll be have the name of your current tool that's active. So I can open inset. Because you'll notice on the engines it didn't matter. But this inset goes across our center, right? So when it insets, it kind of creates this geometry we don't want here, right? We want this to go all the way across. So when you open up the inset faces option, there is a feature. Remember, we saw this on our table and our chair, right? We actually have done this before. This is not a new tool. These options are not new. But it's great to see all the different ways you can use these tools. So I uncheck the very top one, which is boundary. And you see how that kind of makes it so this is all one seamless inset? Boundary. So then I can right click to bring up my face context menu. And a couple down is extrude faces along normals. And I can move this in. You see how that extrudes those faces in? And then if I want to, I can go to two for edge mode. And I can bring this edge down and kind of straighten that up a little bit. If I want to tighten this shape up, right, I can always double click to kind of bring that up a little bit. But I can even use a loop cut or a second inset to just put an extra edge loop in here to kind of tighten that shape up a little bit. Right, loop cut. I just did a loop cut through here, and it tightens that shape up. And now we have kind of our viewport for this ship. Right? This kind of shape here might be a little weird later on, so I'll kind of, once again, I'll maybe, we'll maybe go back and do a little optimization later on. I'll show you tools like the, uh, right, rotate edge. See, I've got a quick key for it because it's a useful tool. But not yet, right? Still got some more stuff to show you on the ship. But I really wanted to get us to the point where we kind of had the body blocked in. And then we could start to kind of fine tune some of the edge loop forms, start to break up in a few parts, add some parts to it. All right, that'll be a great place to stop for today.